I've had plenty of students over the years who have gotten really good at guitar. Some of them got there really fast. And uh, it was startling, you know, how fast some of these kids were learning. And they would reach a certain point, and you could tell they were sort of on this, uh, this level where they weren't sure what to do now. And so I'd always ask them the same question. I'd say, okay, you're really good at guitar, maybe even great, now what? And the look in their eyes always told me that uh, they didn't really think about what was coming next. And by me confronting them with that question, it forced them to figure it out. And what was really interesting was it usually pushed people into five different categories. The first, unfortunately, are people that just end up quitting. And this happened a lot with people who were big goal setters. Maybe their goal is just to know a certain amount of theory to be able to play certain solos or songs or whatever, and then they were good. It's kind of like people who are in martial arts who get their black belts and then they just quit because they're like, okay, I reached my goal. What else do I really want to do with this? That always confused me because in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, when you get your black belt, a lot of people say that's just the beginning. Now you're really ready to learn once you hit black belts. So that mode of thinking where you get to black belt and just quit never resonated with me, but it does exist. The second group are probably my favorite group. It's the eternal students. And those are the people that no matter how great they get at guitar or anything in life, they want to keep going. They just want to keep learning. And that's where they derive their pleasures from actually sitting down and learning more about this instrument, practicing, putting in the time, and uh, I really love the eternal student because of that, that they're not chasing fame, you know, they're not looking to get attention from anybody, they just want to keep getting better at the guitar, and I love that. The third group are the people that have all that knowledge, all that ability, and they want to give it back through teaching. And some people just naturally go down this direction, like my nephew, he just started teaching and he's a natural at it. I know I might be biased because I'm his uncle, but I seriously see all the characteristics in him that are important for a teacher. Uh, a lot of it's patience, but also the ability to convey information. Some people are really great at guitar, but they just can't explain it to anybody. It's funny because I see this a lot in martial arts where somebody's just naturally great at, let's say, jujitsu, and then you ask them how they do something and they almost can't explain it because they just naturally do things and they're not even aware they're doing <laughs> some of these things. So don't mistake being really great at something with the ability to teach it because it's two completely different things. The fourth group are what I like to call the performers, and these are the people that utilize their knowledge and they go out there and actually do something with it. Knowledge is potential power and people really find the power of their knowledge when they go out there and hit the stage or they collaborate with people they start writing or maybe they start a YouTube channel and they perform through that you can reach so many people nowadays so it's really cool to see people take their knowledge and actually bring it to life because a lot of people never take that step and I kind of hate to end with talking about the last group the fifth group because it's kind of a downer but it's the uh, students who kind of become bitter and they eventually become what I call the elitist group and so they got really good at guitar, let's say. They didn't want to keep learning. Like, they wanted to rest on their laurels for the most part. They thought, okay, I put in the work. Let's, uh, let's just get the payback now. Let's get the payoff for this. And maybe they're not interested in teaching and sharing their knowledge. And they don't want to take that step of putting themselves up for scrutiny. They don't want to play live. They don't want to actually play out and uh, take the chance of getting ridiculed. Ironically, these are usually the people that end up being the harshest critics because I've seen a lot of people who get really good at guitar, they decide not to go to that next step, and then they become bitter and they think, okay, this other guitar player is not as good as me, and they're doing all this stuff. And they eventually become the bitter elitist, which is a really sad thing to see. So a big part of this is where you get your energy. So if you get it from setting goals and you accomplish them and then you just quit, that's where your energy was. If you get that energy from sitting and learning, you're gonna be an eternal student. If you get that feeling from teaching, you're gonna teach, obviously. If you have to hit the stage and share your music with the world, that's how you get your energy, that's what you're gonna do. And if you feel the best sitting back and pointing your finger and judging everybody, then you're gonna end up in the elitist group most likely, but uh, I really hope that's not the case. People can be in multiple groups. You know, I'm mostly in the teacher group, but I've also played so many concerts and been in so many bands that I am a performer as well. And then also an eternal student because I love learning. So it all kind of works together for me. But for the most part, if I had to choose just one, I'd have to say I'm in the teacher category. So let me know what you guys are and we will chat about it in the comment section. Okay, thanks everyone. See ya.